<laughs> All right, Yahli do everyone, welcome. We are gathered here today on Dene'ina homelands, my ancestors' homelands in Degeye Kak, otherwise known as Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm so excited to kick off this episode of Amplify Alaska. But I first got to touch a bell in the crew because I'm so excited to get started on this music. Who are y'all? Where are you from? <laughs> Hello. Hi, Ruth. Hi, everyone out there. We're, um, I'm Philip. Uh, my Yupik name is Gilich Ngok, and uh, I'm originally from Bethel. And I have some good friends of mine here with me. And I have Sarah and her home. <laughs> and she's going to be playing bass, keyboards, singing, and <laughs> anything else. There's uh, <laughs> many talents. And then Cameron Cartlin. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is exciting. Yay, amplify. Time to amplify. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so exciting to see the music community really standing behind our social justice movement and answering the call to action that we're all feeling right now in this time of transformation. Um, but first, I should bring my family and my ancestors into this space as well. Uh, my name is Ruth Miller, and my Dena'ina Athabasca name is Shivai Kaysen, and my family's from the Lake Clark area, a little bit farther west, about halfway to Bristol Bay. Um, and I am the Climate Justice Director for a nonprofit, a matriarchal, grassroots, indigenous-led, uh, really dope nonprofit called Native Movement, which is really um, a leading force in the call towards climate action, gender justice, uh, and economic justice in the state. So we are so proud to be working with a huge variety of partners um, towards a huge variety of justice-oriented issues that remind us to turn to our roots, to turn to our ancestral life ways and our traditional ways of life uh, to bring us into a future made for all of us. And I know that Phil's music is going to explain all this work a lot better than, uh, than anything my words could say because it's all about heart and it's all about art. So if you'd like to say anything more, I'd love to get to your songs. <laughs> I don't know. I just like listening to you speaking in your language. That is amazing. That's one of the things um, for people um, that don't uh, aren't familiar with me and the work that I've done with Bamioa. I'm in a group where we do we sing in our Yupik language mm -hmm. and Inuit language, and um, so much of that inspiration comes from kind of the the beauty, you know, the sounds and how the rhythm and how when you the intention it, it's just so cool mm. to hear how when you were speaking I was like oh we need turn up the synthesizers <laughs> you know like we need a beat for that <laughs> well our words I mean in your Yupik language you know too they come from the land they're, mm. they're the names that our plants and animal relatives gave to us to call them by so mm -hmm. it makes sense that it makes us feel like home to hear those words yeah, yep. I'm honored to be learning from my language teachers and I'm grateful for them every day <laughs> well, um, I can start a song. Um, the uh, uh, this these are new songs. I haven't really shared them, and uh, this is a perfect place to to share them. Um, and uh, I'm a little nervous, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna get through this. Y'all, I've heard a preview. They're gonna be incredible. <laughs> You're gonna be dancing in your in your Zoom world. <laughs> well, you know, these are kind of laid back songs, so they're kind of uh, we're gonna slowly work it, work it up to our dance dance numbers. I'm gonna be grooving back <laughs> here for sure. <laughs> um, this song is uh, had has had many names. First, it was last week. It was called Unite. <laughs> and then half a week later, uh, when I emailed you, it was called Conquer You, <laughs> but it is now called Mobilizing. Mm. justify no 
is the perfect anthem for this moment. Mm. Holy, okay, tell us everything about what brought that song to you and what brought those words to you. That was so beautiful and powerful. Mm. Good question, and I probably should have prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even remember. I know, um, uh, trying to think, I should make something up, but I'm not <laughs> uh, good at that. Uh, you know, it's just as a song about... Um, just some feelings I've had for, you know, just growing up and realizing, you know, my uh, my passion to just understand for myself this calling to like mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. bring something and and be involved and and stand up for um, important things that that I feel in, you know close to and. Um, and so I really do think that there's a unity and there's a, there's like a universal, universality in mm -hmm. our struggle and the moment of, uh, when we have to mobilize and do something. And I feel like, um, growing up, I've always been a part of this native movement huh? of like, um, like, um, being present and say, well, what are we going to do? And there's so much distractions and a lot of conflicts and a lot of challenges. And I just, um, I love to try to kind of play with those ideas and try to remember it's like, you know, that we can do this. You know, we, we have the power and the beauty. And, um, but that's going to have to come from, from somewhere. And so this is a, a song to kind of speak about the um that the tendencies of like 
like I mentioned to you, like world domination, like it's about conquering. We think about, oh, we need to conquer and get things back and do these. And really, we just need to really conquer ourselves. And we need to stay focused and think about unity and be mobilized. Mm. Heck yeah. Yeah, I think if we break this down, you know, what felt so um, familiar to me and what felt so tender to me listening to your song is, you know, Me Too, I didn't have a single moment that I, you know, started thinking these things or started feeling that there was an impetus to act and a responsibility to protect because I think that so many of us with this spark in our hearts, so many of us who know how to love and know how to love deeply, know how to love a place and know how to love a people feel uh, the weight of injustices and weight of conflict on our hearts and on our minds and on our spirits. And I think so many folks who are watching tonight and so many more are just searching for that moment to mobilize. Mm. They're just searching for that opportunity to act. And whether it's supporting a grassroots nonprofit or whether it's getting out in the streets and protesting, you know, these are the pockets of potential that we need folks to finally take a hold of, mm. to finally address so that we can be willing participants in the structures of our society that govern us. Mm -hmm. You know, for us native peoples, we understood at a time what it meant to live in reciprocity, to live in community, and to live in a healing-centered and a wellness-centered way. And our challenge of the past, you know, few centuries, and particularly the past few decades, has been how to um, reconcile, I would say, reconcile um, new forms of society that we didn't necessarily agree to with who we are as indigenous peoples and who we are as Alaskans, as a broader community. You know, what kind of way do we want to live? Do we want to know that we can call up our neighbor when our car gets stuck in a ditch? Do we want to be able to trust one another? Do we want to know that we can call up a neighbor when, you know, we can't pay rent, when we can't put food on our table? It's, it's about reintroducing that potential for action that I think so many of us are craving and that I totally hear in your song mm. and uniting to rebuild a community that we can all believe in, right? That's what social justice work is, right? Mm -hmm. We all share the struggle, that's for sure. And we can, you know, it's undeniable. And that's, um, and that's what I hope that we can all share the, um, that action of helping, you know, mm -hmm. the generosity and some of those beautiful things that you're talking about. Mm. Yeah, I'm really, uh, overwhelmed with gratitude as well for the numerous leaders that we have in our community who are pointing that way, who are, you know, shining the light in dark spaces to remind us of the power that our communities have. So much of the work of Native movement is really um, expanding opportunities for engagement. It's not just, you know, like educating and, and sharing things that are coming up and stuff. It's reminding our people how powerful we are. Mm -hmm. It's working deeply with our elders and youth to make sure that our traditional stories and our subsistence ways of life are valued just as much as any college education or something like that. It's reminding our Alaskan peoples the power that we have to create, to protect, to defend, and to you know, create life and community in such a beautiful, but albeit harsh environment, you know, that, that takes real relationship building. Mm -hmm. And so, so much of, you know, political engagement is really reminding folks of their own power to act and providing those pathways to action. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love how, um, like, uh, native movement, I know that I, that, um, fish camps and, you know, going being together and in get going into nature and having these important conversations and and connecting in these ways um how valuable that is for all of this to be able to be mm -hmm. to be done in such beautiful and casual ways mm -hmm. natural ways just being together upriver yeah. and in um so I'm really, um, I'm really happy to be here with you with, mm. and with Native Movement, and um, I'm a big fan. And so uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it's a great idea to, you know, connect artists with, you know, the mm. people in the community that are doing good work and share space together. Heck yeah. Yeah, the core of all this work is art and artists. We're grateful for you. I, I was just visiting with a, a good friend and coworker of mine, Jesse Thornton, who's an incredible uh, mm -hmm. local artist. And... She was recently asked a question amongst other artists, you know, what what got you involved? What what first lit your fire for this work? And you know, no one said it was an email 
or like a letter <laughs> signing petition or something, <laughs> everyone said that what really activated them was a full body experience that they had, a full body experience where they were cutting fish on the riverbank, you know, mm. where they were talking with folks. And I know that we're in Zoom and I know that we're six feet apart, but I was just overwhelmed with gratitude sitting here thinking, holy, look where I get to be. Look at the music I get to listen to and look at the people that I get to connect with and, and hopefully more and more folks will, will get engaged through this. Mm -hmm. Can I hear another song? Sure. <laughs> this song, um, this next song is called Conflict. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really about taking life serious and just acknowledging that this is not a game and that um that there's a uh yeah anyways it's a song <laughs> It's a conflict Like the tides on the sea You're the conflict Stop bothering me On my way up Knock down on my knees Who's a conflict? Is it me? Is it me? Is me? Back down, I'm backing down now. Thinking thoughts carefully. Prepare for time, is it now? Bring. Hear the bells of stupidity There's no time for scuffle Cause the rage has reached the time I believe in the future of lies Either you sink or float to the top It's a conflict Like the tides on the sea You're the conflict Stop bothering me On my way up Knock down on my knees Who's a conflict? Is it me? Is it me? Is me? Stand up. I'm standing up now. It's a force like gravity. Weight is a notion of time to heal the morbidity there's no time for scuffle cause the rage has reached the time I believe in the future of lies Either you sink or float to the top It's a conflict Like the tides on the sea You're the conflict Stop bothering me On my way up Knocked down on my knees Who's a conflict? Is it me? 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 I can 
feel your conflict. Cameron, I can feel your conflict. Ruth, is there conflict? Is there time to heal the morbidity, the conflict? get the songs out it's like they're in your head and then you're like i tried i'm you know i'm i come from an oral tradition so i can't read or write music <laughs> so when i t work with like musicians i'm like so it's kind of like yeah i have to i don't know it must be pretty frustrating <laughs> it's, like, it's a, little, a little conflict yeah, yeah. <laughs> well there's a song about that. So. Sarah's going to write her own conflict song next. <laughs> Working with Bill is a conflict. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... A, um, I actually wrote that song um, during the pandemic, and mm. I am so... Um, uh, in trauma... I, I'm just so affected by all of the horrible all of the sadness and and just afraid and is it, it was just um i was getting so wrapped up in my fear and you know with the masks and seeing people not wearing them and you know this and i was just feeling so i was getting so agitated and i actually almost like confronted this guy to like have a fight or like you know like provoking and it was really provo provocative and just kind of being immature mm -hmm. <laughs> with my my own feelings and and a, after i had that i talked to a, a really dear friend of mine a mentor of mine terry jose he's out there <laughs> and i was telling him about my what was happening and he was um you know kind of helped me or just talked to me and listened and understood mm -hmm. that you know those kind of things happen and those feelings happen and that um, that it's not a game. Like, I, I can't, you know, just be getting upset and, and doing these things where um, I let my emotions get the better of me. And I have to be prepared and be ready for when I'm ready to face my fears and face my the things that are really bothering me instead of yeah. allowing these things that are just um, just maybe annoyances or just things that we need to, you know, find ways to deal with. And so... Mm. Yeah, no, I know I'm extremely sensitive to the, the movings of the world. And I mean, I'm a sensitive person anyway. I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we're moving through a collective trauma right now. There's hardly a person that's been untouched by the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think what it's done is that it's um, brought us all to a shared vulnerability where not only is it really hard to do what we're doing right now. It's hard for everyone to be away from loved ones and to be away from social circles and to not be able to hug each other, but it's making us even more vulnerable to just the normal cycles of life that are sometimes painful and that are sometimes hurtful. I know that, you know, all things will build up and build up and build up and I think I'm fine and then I'll stub my toe and <laughs> I throw a big tantrum because it's just that extra little thing that pushes you over the edge. And so when you consider that we're all moving through, you know, such a difficult, painful time, it's even more important to recenter on healing justice and healing work and think about what community means to us so that when we can gather again, when we can have potlatch and dance and yachak again, it'll mean so much more. God, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. And you know, it makes me so much more grateful for, um, you know, organizations like Native Movement and, and many more that are focused on that healing wellness right now. You know, whether it's with our um, indigenous women's gathering where we just sit together and bead um, or our healing men's circles that are such powerful spaces for healing toxic masculinity and, and talking about the masculine experience. You know, those are the pieces of support work that are so crucial for all of us right now. It's, it's manifesting that community that we're missing so bad. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And 
I want to congratulate our very first $50 donation of the night. Oh. Native Movement has a donation page open on the Alaska, the Amplify Alaska page as well as the Native Movement website, and we'll be tracking the donations for tonight with a campaign goal of $5,000. All right. Yeah. We're going to do this. That would be really, really special and much appreciated. Um, and I, I know it feels distant to donate money through a click of a button, but it really, really makes a difference when that can be, you know, increased mailers and, and you know, time to do graphic art um, and get the word out to our folks and host new events like this. I mean, it makes such a difference uh, to the folks on the ground doing the labor. So anything is appreciated, especially that first $50. Chicken, Oyana. thank you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, and I know that Native Movement has done has been very active during this time mm -hmm. with Zoom. And I know Zoom is like such a, um, yeah, yeah, it's such a weird environment uh, that we want to get rid of. But <laughs> it really, you, um, uh, you guys have done such a great job of using that medium and also social media mm -hmm. and to be able to connect and to really bring in the younger generation mm -hmm. of people that are... Um, you know, so important for the movement and for the work that um, needs to be done. And anyways, I applaud you guys for, you know, not taking this moment and like just letting it pass by by grasping and holding, you know, taking um, hold of what needs to be done now. And it's, I really feel like you guys have really um, made a, made a difference. Mm. So, Guyana, thank you guys for, Chicken and um, I'm biased. My, my daughters <laughs> are, <laughs> they, during this time, they've been getting more involved and, and um, was, they were um, a part of some of the um, seminars and um, things that you guys um, put on. And I was like, I was like, what, girls, what do you, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> like, oh, we're, we're on, we're doing a um, virtual fish camp. Virtual, <laughs> Um, thing and I was like, "Whoa, what native movement?" I was like, "Oh, okay, that's a <laughs> proud daddy moment." But um, but you guys are doing such incredible work. So, Guyana. Mm. Yeah, you know we're we're very very grateful for your daughter's participation just on a personal level, but it has been amazing to see more and more folks get involved over this online platform. You know, I, I think I think what you're mentioning is the um, online native movement. Uh, and digitize it <laughs> camp that mm. we hosted. You know, generally we gather on uh, Lower Tanana Dene lands on the, on the banks of the Tanana River at um, at, um, at at a precious and sacred place uh, at the late Howard Luke's fish camp, where we have a, a movement school for a number of days. And um, I, before I began working for Native Movement, I attended once, and it was. Uh, I see it as, as the start of a new chapter in my personal life, and it was extremely powerful for me. Um, because of course, you know, not only are we thinking about how to activate our community and how to engage youth, but we have our elders with us, we have our healers with us, we have our artists with us. And so what we can offer is this holistic experience of being on the land and um, doing the personal healing work so that we can transform our energy into collective energy for movement building. Uh, but of course, we did that online this year in a, in a virtual camp, um, and it's only one of the many ways that we've really been challenged to expand access um, to community time, to ways to be um, activated together. But there's a lot more to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're still you know, working hard. <laughs> hopefully, we'll get those donations and then get um, people together at the fish camp again this summer. Mm -hmm. That's the dream. That is the dream. So... Um, so the next song, huh? Mm, please. <laughs> um, this song is called Jesus. stand you stand a 
up for a different kind of jeans. Jeans. You stand, stand up for a different kind of jeans. Man, what to do with the other hand? It's so easy to be hard. Eternal from the start, still you stand. Stand up for a different kind of Jesus, Jesus. Oh, you stand, oh, stand up for a different kind of Jesus, Jesus. A crib is not a cage So say you do in his holy name Just sit and behave Distortion causing pain and you stand, and you stand up for a different kind of Jesus, Jesus. Oh, you stand, you stand up for a different kind of Jesus, Jesus. We've got this stale cracker We gone and spoil the meat And we know Crackers gonna crumble And there's no sign of cheese and you stand up for a different kind of Jesus, Jesus. And you stand up for a different kind of Jesus, Jesus. I'm a preacher's kid. I grew up in the church, and um, also my mom, I'm a uh, mama's boy. <laughs> 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 and um, my mom uh, is, a, is a very spiritual person um, and spiritual guide. And, um, and yeah, that's... Uh, I don't know when I wrote that song, mm. but um, I definitely think it was after the whole kids in cages thing because um, I really, I didn't, I, I really um, was uh, 
yeah, it was a very troubling mm. um, part of our reality of things that are happening, and mm-hmm. um, and so yeah, it's um, I I f- I find um, a lot of strength and beauty in um, spiritual guides and um, examples of mm. of good living and how to behave and. We have a lot of those um, oral scriptures in our mm. language, in our, in our, in our, um, in our families and ancestries, and and they're all um, they're all ways of encouraging us to sometimes do the things that are kind of anti what are in our interests, maybe or but um, there are guides out mm. there, and so. I really, you know, this song is is really about, um, you know, growing up in in the church. It's really about the using Jesus as a example of how to live, and and so I, I just think that's a really beautiful um, uh, way of of um, understanding things, and it's really challenging to be live up to that that type of standard of humility and mm. and. Uh, and that level of grace. And so anyways, that's mm-hmm. my Jesus song. It's beautiful. It's haunting. It's beautiful. And I think it's the perfect response to a, a trauma like what we're facing at the southern border, of the so-called United States. You know, I, I didn't grow up in the church. Um, I think I have s- stepped into a church a few times. <laughs> but my mother follows her indigenous spirituality, and my father is Jewish. And uh, tomorrow night, we're celebrating Passover, which is one of our highest holy days. And it's a, um, it's a beautiful holiday. It's my mother's favorite holiday, that she didn't have an engagement with Judaism until she met my dad, um, because it's, it's a holiday that celebrates liberation from oppression. It's mm-hmm. a history of when our people were freed from slavery. Um, and it's uh, a holiday that centers gratitude. Um, my favorite part of our ceremonies is when we um, start speaking the verses of Dainu, which means, uh, yeah, thank you. It is saying, you know, God, if you had done this, it would have been enough. But you did this. If you had done that, it would have been enough. But mm. you did that. And so having this springtime reminder of how much we have to be grateful of those um, those callings, whether they come in the form of religion or whether they come in the form of matriarchs or guides that remind us of our higher purpose, that remind us of uh, the values that we want to embody for the year to come. I think springtime is a perfect time to be reflecting on that. Yeah, I know we have a couple feet of snow outside, but I'm always <laughs> thinking about the little crocuses that are coming up in our Alaskan gardens now. And, you know, what kind of, what kind of summer do we want to have? You know, what kind of... Um, being do we want to be in the world, especially through a time of transformation, through so much pain. You know, as you were speaking about the crisis at the border of kids being separated from their families and thrown in cages, you know, it is just as relevant to be mourning the violence against our Asian American and Pacific Islander relatives now and the violence that our black relatives are constantly facing day after day. Um, what brings it to heart, especially for me, is the violence of our missing and murdered indigenous women and girls, um, something that we particularly advocate for at Native Movement, although we work very hard to stand in solidarity with uh, all of our siblings of color. You know, that hope, that hope, that calling to that higher good is, um, is an opportunity for all of us you know, to do better, to answer that moment to manifest a springtime that's brighter than the last. Mm. (laughs) And speaking of gratitude, I just got word that our donations have very generously jumped to $650 bills. (laughs) We are so grateful. And if I interpreted this correctly, we also have an offer for a $500 match. So the next $500 donation that comes in will be matched by another very generous donor. Uh, we could not be more grateful. It really, really makes a difference. And we're here celebrating all of you and your commitment to your community as well. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
oh, I still got chills. Do you have another dancing song? Mm, I know, right? <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it up a little bit. Um, uh, uh, this, uh, I, this song, I, I'm calling it something because I don't have a name for it. <laughs> That was real mysterious. Uh, it's yeah, called something. Something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a little it's something. You know why? Um, in uh, I, you know my songs are like got reggae songs and different genres and different styles. And mm. one is that I grew up listening to is is rap and, mm. and hip hop. I'm not. Young anymore, so I don't. I'm not like cool in the hip hop young culture, so I, I don't. So like, it's intimidating to do like a rap, you know, because it's like, um, you know, I think of like like River Flows and some of the like, the yeah. real the real uh, lyricists and rhymers, mm. but um, um, I like to I like to rap, so uh, <laughs> this song is a uh, is is a, is a more of a rap song. Mm. <clears throat> the U.S. of A. Asking for more the natives to play. The victimized struggle and the greed is here to stay. Been here, time's nothing new. Be the value they don't want you to. It's a game for as long as you play. For an offensive game, put the defenses away. Una, ah, hey, ah, una, ah, hey, ah, Puddles of the melting crevasse, colder than the struggles of the Inuit past. The current situation of Alaska's first mass is to understand the nature of political past. Concede or protest, wake up or arrest. Political action is either spill or possess. The spirit of struggle seems forgotten. The ones that were raw speaking now fell rough. Down into the barrel unseen, played into the hand, into the bluff of the queen, assimilating us into the modern European. The difference in me is I grew up Afro Sheen. We got the home front battle in the front line, loosening the grip into an argument we can't find, molding to the pieces of the puzzle that were cut. Well, guess what? We're by ourselves with the door shut. Deeper than the puddles of the melting crevasse, colder than the struggles of the Inuit past. The current situation of Alaska's first mass is to understand the nature of political past. Standing unaware, all alone with your thoughts, engraved by a name with a plaque that you bought. So you in a suit might as well be forgotten, numbing the pain, all your gains ill-gotten. For me, it's so difficult to justify the shame while you're in a boardroom occupying blame, desperately accounting for the numbers to contain, but the value in shares is a disappearing gain. <laughs> that was <Ooh>. brilliant. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was incredible. I could listen to that all day. Oh, and you were playing shy. Whatever. <laughs> wow. Okay, walk me through it. Walk uh, me through that song. That's me trying to remember <laughs> all those lyrics. I think I, <laughs> I honestly, I think this the, the, this year I, I um, came to terms. I think I have ADHD. I have such a hard time, like, like grasping onto my thoughts, and so I'm like, 
like trying to think of all these lyrics. I'm like, how am I going to do it? Mm-mm. But I, um, yeah, this is just a song about um, rap songs, hip hop, you got to be edgy, you know, <laughs> and you, you got to um, be provocative. Mm. And so um, I always want to be, like, I want to empower. I'm, I'm really um, invested in, in, in encouraging um something that's why mm. it's called some something and um but this um you know we have a lot of a lot of challenges for me like for being yupik and alaska native like i um have like so much um questions about our identity mm. and what does it mean for us to um to work through our native movement and to you know to understand like how are we going to um work through um politically and um you know for me like i don't have a i'm an artist so i don't have like a degree in work in in an org or a a native corporation Mm -hmm. and so it's like i have this like kind of interesting view of like what's happening with like Mm -hmm. native leadership and what does it mean and and what does it mean to be a powerful native leader? And when I think of that, I don't mm. think of like somebody who has a degree and is now an head of an organization. Mm. You know, I think of like you know back you know as a kid and seeing the el- you know the elders that I was and the leaders that were mm. just family leader you know heads of family and and the community and that strength and the beauty of those of our. Um, Oh, what is native leadership? And so, um, so that rap songs is is just like um, yeah, just yeah. just about um, just provoking mm. the idea and the I, of of some of the pitfalls of that um, assimilation and mm-hmm. values. It's really about values. And right now, with the native corporations, we have such an emphasis on on shares and mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. um, what it means. Um, and to me, it doesn't really mean anything. I don't, those shares, mm-hmm. it, I, to me, it's just like the people and, and right. the, the connection that we have as people. Well, we were never meant to be in a corporate structure. You know, that was created in, in the 1970s by the U.S. government to settle our Alaska Native lands claims, which was really just writing on a piece of paper how to take over our Native tribal lands that were ours for time immemorial, or rather not ours, that we lived in relationship with for time immemorial, right? Mm-hmm. And so what I heard in your song, too, was all of that. It was, it was um, a reminder it was a reminder to the leaders that we look up to for leadership to come back to us, mm. to come back to our values, to come back to our pace, too, to sit down with us and to think about if, you know, the economic profit that many of our Native leaders are, are seeking um, is unsustainable if it comes at the expense of our lands and waters, if it comes at the expense of our people's health. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a reminder to come back to what really counts, which is our community, it's our people, our cultures. Uh, the lifetime ahead of our youth and their descendants and their descendants, you know. So how do we reintroduce that framework to our leadership that um, that you know reminds them that they have people they're accountable to, and that working in this you know United States imperial system of capitalism isn't working for us. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'm, I'm young. <laughs> I'm young, but I don't mind anteing some of our <laughs> leaders, some of our electeds even, uh, when they forget who they are leading and, um, you know, forget, forget who it, they aspire to be representative of. You know, a, a really, really precious memory just came back to me of one of my dearest elders, uh, Nutak Simmons, Doreen Simmons of Utkjarvik. Um, and she was sharing with me, you know, memories of the old ways, of the old times. And she was talking about, you know, way back then, the whales, the fish, the seals, they were our leaders. They were our bosses. And we had to keep the lands clean. We had to keep the waterways clean and prepared for them. We had to make sure they were blessed. We had to make sure they were happy so that our leaders would want to come back to us. And in return, they would feed us. They would give us homes. They would give us... um, they would give us wellness. Uh, you know, we never knew scarcity in that way. Um, and so, you know, now when we think about, you know, the really 
shoddy deals were offered of developing our lands for oil and for gas and for minerals when it comes at the cost of creating huge scars against our landscapes, huge open pit mines, huge, I mean, huge amounts of environmental degradation against our watersheds. Um, I, I can't imagine that, you know, the people would feel that's a, that's a fair deal. Even knowing that we've been given a deck that's stacked, it's just stacked against us. You know, so yeah. how do we call them back to our values, to us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that that's um, um, by assuming that, like, um, that we have to continue to be in this defensive position mm -hmm. where we're like, no, we can, we have the opportunity to like embrace our values mm -hmm. and to. Um, and that's, I feel like, what's happening a lot, especially now with the younger generation being more a part of the conversation, is that the the values that the in kind of the integration of values and how to communicate mm -hmm. um, some of the, the indigenous values um, into English and mm -hmm. into um, you know our environment here, that um, we can see things from a different perspective and say, well, you know, and that's, I think, that the power we have as Native people and as, as uh, Native leaders within this, in, this, um, this time is that we can, you know, we can still do the things that we need to do to keep the lights on, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we can have a gathering uplifting people's spirits so that they understand that the value with them is, is way mm -hmm. more, it outshines all of the logistical things to get mm -hmm. to that mo that place and that um, and how you know how powerful that mm -hmm. is and and you know sometimes there yeah anyways it's just it's yeah, a lot yeah, of stuff yeah. we got to juggle but we got to um, it's important that we do and if we're going to prioritize right. anything we might as well prior prioritize what is going to be the lasting message yeah. of hope versus you know just putting all of our focus and emphasis on you know policy and all those things that mm -hmm, need to happen mm -hmm. and you know those debates but like you know there almost needs to be two conversations happening yeah i mean and they don't well they don't even have to be two conversations too because we have to create we have to insist on room to bring them together right and so you know how how can we insist on a future that has our values as part of technological innovation and economic revitalization? We don't have to sacrifice or abandon our people and our frontline communities and what, what is the foundation of our cultures to continue to be successful and sustainable in a modernized Alaska, right? I was um, actually just reading some testimony um, that was given by a, a number of folks up in the North Slope um, and even in, even in these testimonies around the environmental impact statements for exploration of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, um, some folks were being hurried along, and they did not like that. They were saying, don't rush me. Don't rush me. This is our time to speak. This is our people who should be the deciders. You know, Don't, don't make me stick to, to your time. You should be here for years and then act on behalf of us. Mm. Um, and that resonated with me so much because a lot of my work as, as climate justice director is speaking with um, and strategizing with uh, folks in DC and California and, and many folks um, these days, you know, working towards the, the international climate accords, the, the uh, Paris agreements, m many of them based in Europe. And so much of what I spend my time is saying is, no, 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 that doesn't sound like Alaska. No, you're not, you're not representing Alaska when you say that. You know, how do we bring our tribal leadership, how do we bring the voice of our people up to those decision-making spaces in D.C. or, you know, in these international spheres? How do we make sure that it's our stories, our memories of the whales and the seals and the fish being our leaders that are just as important as whatever policy is written by folks that have never stepped foot on our lands? Mm -hmm. And so it's all about that continuum you know, that continuum of relationship, whether it's with our Alaska Native leaders, as your song represents, or whether it's with other decision makers, you know, reminding them that we have the strength, we have the power, we also have the solutions to bring us into a collective future that's beneficial and just and well for all of us, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that, having the, the whales as our leaders. I was thinking 
The whales are our podcast. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Yeah. We need that motivation. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been great. I um I definitely um you know, I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again. I'm a big fan of native movement and I um uh it's a really um Grassroots, I think, it doesn't really give it justice. It's a family, community mm. organization of of beautiful people who have been um, dedicated and passionate and caring about um, Native identity, but kind of like what you were talking about, of what it means to be connected to a place and mm. to the animals and to um, really speaking for the wind and the the, mm. the tundra and the caribou and you know and and that's a difficult thing to do for conversation to have nowadays mm-hmm. you know because people they just want to talk about their apps and you know you know mm-hmm. the the things that that are tangible and about pe- you know arguments with people you're wrong i'm right you know like all these things and um and the argument about the land is about like, well, who um, about who owns the land or who has the right to do something on it, and but the um, from a native perspective, at least from my upbringing, from my perspective, is that you know it's really about um, being steward and and honoring the essence and the the, the li- liveliness or the living part of the land, and that's really the. Um, the empowerment for us to then do something yeah. by honoring that relationship um, because it tastes good, <laughs> it feels good, and it is good. Mm-hmm. And it's something that we can all share. And, um, you know, and, um, I know that um, Native Movement, you know, works a lot on land issues, and and but really it's more about... It's so holistic. It's like about... Mm-hmm everything Mm -hmm. and it's about just the connections of how to connect um yeah it's just Mm -hmm. i can see it's like a difficult thing to really share and communicate in our modern times and in this western world and the way that we are used to framing things but i'm really happy that you guys are here and you know partners in you know as far as a lot of you know other groups but we're you know really want to for me as a native musician, I really want to share mm. the sense of community and the connection and the idea that we have been given from um, uh, a, a long history of being in accordance with the land mm-hmm. and with mm-hmm. a, not a sense of ownership, mm-hmm. with not a sense of entitlement. It's a sense of, uh, it's a prayerful sense of of honor and um and it's something that then we then bestow onto our family, mm-hmm. like names. We, we give our children the names of our ancestors. And it's just continuing this way of um, having a, you know, continuing a prayerful state of, mm-hmm. of um, a living together in happiness. And, and so that's, um, and I, I think that's a really wonderful message to share with ourselves, with your family, with your neighbors. And like you said, with the world, mm-hmm. and and because there's so much, you know, we all live here together, and there's a lot of different ways to to um, to treat each other and to treat the land, and there's a balance, there's a conversation, there's a negotiation that's going to happen, and um, it's so wonderful to see more and more. Um, uh, uh, like native voices and indigenous voices coming up to not being not afraid, but like being assertive mm-hmm. and saying, "Let's talk." You yeah. know, these are priorities. You know, these are these are amazing. You know, let let's still um, do what we can do mm-hmm. to work together to be able to honor and bring this ceremony together. Mm-hmm. And um, and yeah, that's um, that's good work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's lessons for us all, for our whole Alaskan community, you know, how to be in right relationship, 
Yeah, how to manifest a collective vision for all of us, how to work together. And so as much as we do environmental rights and indigenous rights, gender justice, economic justice, you know, all of it is empowering one another to advocate for ourselves, to say, hey, we matter. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to... I'm going to look for a whale podcast, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm also super excited um, to announce that we have reached $750 on our donation site. We are super, super grateful. Uyan. Yeah. Guyana and uh, Chinen to all of our donors. And now we're in crunch time because we only got like a couple more songs. So well, uh, a couple. I think we're, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I'm hoping you'll do a couple. <laughs> we're going to bring this to uh, culminate to this. Figured if I'd slip that in there, maybe you'd do like 12 more. <laughs> uh, maybe. Okay, so we got one more song for well, all of you. One step at a time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this song is fitting. Um, to all you guys, thanks for um, allowing us to mm -hmm. share and to share with each other and to share with you and all the people here manning the cameras and the sound booth mm -hmm. and um, people in Hawaii, <laughs> people mm -hmm. all over the world. Um, thank you for um, spending this time with us. And um, actually, for me to share these songs, it's a really um, wonderful gift to be able to, to communicate things that are special to me and, um, and to share them with you guys. Yeah. So this song is called uh, Kuyana, My Friend, and it's like um, my friendship song. <laughs> There's no better day than today your all beautiful face it takes away the gray i need you and i hope that you need me i'll be your right here when oh you need oh oh we on a friend Guyana lover, oh, oh, Guyana brother from another mother, oh, oh, Guyana man, Guyana mother, oh, oh, Guyana days like there's no other, young hey, young hey, young I need a friend right about now. Your pick is my thing. I want you to know I need you. You need, oh, oh, we on a friend, we on a lover, oh, oh, we on a brother from another mother, oh, oh, we on a man, we on a mother, Days like there's no other. Don't be afraid. Just sing and dance it out. We'll be right here. Oh. Oh.
Kuyana. Chenan to Kuyana, everyone. Mm. That was incredible. Yay! Y'all, these were five <laughs> exclusive songs from the one and only Philip Blanchett. Yeah, rapper extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible <laughs> accompanist. We Cameron, are so grateful Sarah. for you. We are so grateful for this time together. This is the best part of my, probably the best part.